Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at four new cartridge collections for the Evercade handheld. Now, if you're not familiar with the Evercade handheld, it kind of turned out to be one of the surprise successes that has happened in the last couple years. It's kind of wild. And basically what it is, as you can see here, it is a handheld that is very similar in shape and size to the Sony PSP. And it plays a lot of retro games, indie games, things like that. But what it really does, it appeals to the collector market, the people who are looking for adding to their collection physical cartridges. And there already are a bunch of solutions out there that'll let you play ROMs on the go. Other handhelds will do this. Obviously your smartphone will do that. But again, what makes this unique is that they get fully licensed games and then put them into these cartridge packs and then sell them to collectors. So again, it's fully licensed and they also add some really cool perks as well. So you'll see that for instance, in these, they have full color manuals. Sometimes they have stickers and collectibles. And so they sent these to me for review. And as you can see here, they have pack 15, 16, 17, and 18. So they already have a bunch of packs already released for it. And they have even more of them planned for the near future. And so I'm gonna go fairly quickly through these because all told there are actually 40 games in these packs all together. Uh, so that would take a long time. So I'm just gonna kind of give you some of the highlights and some of my initial thoughts. Starting with Indie Heroes Collection 1. And as you can see here, there are 14 games included in this. And as I mentioned, when you pop it open, there is a full color manual in here, which is really nice because it gives you a little bit of background on the individual developers, as well as instructions and sometimes hints on how to play the games. And also there are some cool stickers here from some of the characters of the games that I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna start with Alien Cat 2. Now this is a game I had not played before, but as you can see here, it is a puzzle game where you need to complete the levels to find the parts to rebuild your spaceship. Now, I know this looks pretty simple, but man, I'll tell you what, the challenge comes in the form of a clone cat that shows up that mimics your every move. So when you go right or left, up or down, it'll do the same. And the thing is, you need to keep both of them alive to solve that particular level. And with all of those traps around there, you can see where it could be very tricky. Your eye tends to go back and forth between the two just to keep it alive. Here's a game called Chain Break. So this is an auto running game, very similar to something that you would maybe find on your mobile phone, where your character's always constantly running. It's always pushing forward. And then your job is to basically just weave and dodge and kind of jump over obstacles to get to the finish line and try to do it in the best time possible. Deader is kind of a weird game. So this is a puzzle platforming game where your character wants to basically recollect all of your outstanding debts. And you do so by moving these platforms, uh, moving these boxes around, trying to jump to get to the exit. Uh, also, for some reason, you smash blocks with your head and more. Very bizarre game. Here's a game I was very excited to see on this cartridge. That is Doodle World. So I've actually talked about this. I believe I think I played this on the PlayStation 4. Uh, but what this is, uh, it's an indie platforming game that has these kind of childlike hand-drawn graphics. Um, I gotta tell you, this is one of the most fun indie platforming games I've played in a while because the controls are extremely tight in this game. It feels extremely good playing this. Plus there's a lot of fun just going through the levels. Uh, there's extra things to explore and also discover. Uh, trust me, if you haven't played Doodle World, this should not be missed. Another game I ended up liking way more than I expected to, that is Flea. So this is yet another really cool platforming game. The gimmick here is that your Flea is constantly bouncing. You have no control over that. And so what you need to do is time your movements to those bounces. Otherwise you might end up on spikes that are you know, sticking down from the ceiling. It's way more difficult than it looks, but it is super fun to play. Another game I highly recommend. Here is Foxyland. And as you can see here, it's a pretty great looking platforming game that has some very challenging puzzles. You have to find all of the gems in order to unlock the door. And uh, it's really gonna put your platforming skills to the test, but it's very addictive. Another game I wanna mention here is Super Homebrew War. So 
I guess to kind of think like Super Smash mixed with the original arcade version of Mario Brothers, but with characters from the homebrew community, many of which are actually on this cartridge. So that's a really neat feature there. Now, while I didn't go into detail of every game included on this cartridge, as you can see, there's a lot of games on this, a lot of different developers and a lot of cool games to check out. All right, moving on, we have the Worms Collection. Now, this one only has three games in it, but I feel like they chose them fairly well. So to start off with, you basically have the original Worms and this is a classic for a reason. This is such a fun game where basically you have teams of worms that are basically just trying to blow each other off of, off of the map using all these different weapons. It's so much fun. There's a lot of humor to this. It's, it's pretty cool. Now I did run into an issue with this game where the button mapping and the layout of the buttons in this game wasn't quite what I was expecting. I found it a little bit confusing. Uh, thankfully, you can go into the settings as you see here and you can change the button mapping to something that's perhaps a little bit more accessible, a little bit more to your liking. Not every game has this option, but I was really happy to see that this did. Uh, moving on to Worms Armageddon, I actually found that this game felt better with the, the button mapping of the Evercade and it wasn't quite as confusing, although it seemed like it was just a little bit confusing, but I just wanna just throw that out there that, you know, again, you're dealing with multiple old systems that are being emulated on this particular device. So it can be, it can be kind of confusing. And then the last game included on this is Worms Blast, which I guess is kind of like a bust a move style arcade game in the Worms universe. I found this to be, an okay game, but not the reason why you would really want to buy this. It's really, you really want to buy this for the traditional Worms experience. And this is a nice bonus, but it didn't blow my socks off. The next cartridge pack is the Jellico Collection. And in here we have 10 games. And I think some of these you're already going to be familiar with because they were, you know, somewhat popular on the NES and Super NES. And again, I'm not gonna review every single one of these since you're gonna be familiar with some of them. Um, but some highlights here are, you know, maybe the Brawl Brothers, which is a Super Nintendo game that is very similar to Double Dragon or Final Fight. I found this to actually be pretty enjoyable. I, I, I was enjoying myself. Also, City Connection is on here and I'm really glad they included this because this is a really kind of unique platforming game. So the premise here is that you drive a car around the city and what you're trying to do is paint the entire town white. And you do that by driving over the entire surface and all the platforms in the city. But the challenge here is that your car automatically moves to the left or the right. And all you can basically do is turn it. And then what you can do is jump. And so you are trying to avoid the police and you're also trying to avoid cats. I'm not sure why they put cats in here as something that you would want to avoid, but okay. Also included is a really good shoot 'em up called Earth Defense Force. I actually have a physical copy of this game uh, for the actual Super Nintendo. So it's cool to see it here. Uh, a really well-made game. A lot of people like this, myself included. Here's another game that I wasn't familiar with until I started playing it on here. That is, of course, Operation Logic Bomb. So this is a top-down shoot-em-up that definitely gives me that kind of Ikari Warriors vibe, maybe Smash TV vibe, especially with its controls. And like in Smash TV, you're gonna wanna hold down that shoulder button so that you can move and shoot in one direction. Um, yeah, it's a really cool game, actually. It's really fun to explore the levels. Uh, it's got decent graphics, as you can see here. I like it. Another game I found myself playing a lot more than I expected to is The Ignition Factor. So uh, this is a top-down fireman game that is part action and part puzzler. So before each mission or before each level, you outfit your fireman um, with different, different things like you'll have fire extinguishers, maybe you'll take an ax with you, maybe some rope, things like that. Um, and then you just run into a burning building trying to find the best way through it without dying. And the main goal is to basically just try to find all the survivors and maybe there are some collectibles or things that you need to uh, rescue from the fire. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game actually, I like it. 
But as you can see by this lineup, and I didn't cover every game in detail here, but yeah, that's a pretty diverse selection of games included on that cartridge. And uh, you know, several I hadn't played before. So that's pretty cool. And then we have the Pico Collection Volume 2. So in this are another 13 games. And this one has a bit of a theme. It has a bit of a sports theme going on here. Um, so I'll be honest with you guys, you know, I'm probably not the best guy to review these because as you guys know, I don't really spend a lot of time watching sports, playing sports or playing sports games. However, there are a couple in here that are racing games and extreme sports stuff. So I can kind of get into those. So a couple things of note here. First of all, you have a game called Beast Ball. And actually that was originally called Brutal Sports Football that was originally released on the Atari Jaguar. When I fired this game up, it was giving me some serious Jaguar vibes. So that is, you know, that, that just totally makes sense. Uh, this is very similar to say Mutant League Football. Next up is Eliminator Boat Duel. So this is a pretty fun NES racing game. I actually dig this quite a bit. Of course, I love, you know, I, I know you guys know this, but I love racing games that are on the water. And uh, this one kind of has a little bit of an extreme sports vibe to it. It's a little bit silly, but yeah, I was having a lot of fun with this. Here's one that I thought was kind of interesting because it was originally a PlayStation 1 game that was released only in Europe. And that of course is Football Madness. Again, I'm not gonna be the best guy to judge whether this is a good football slash soccer game or not, but I do believe this is the first time I played a PlayStation 1 game running on the Evercade. I could be wrong about that, but that was a bit of a surprise. Another racing game, Full Throttle All-American Racing. Game I was having you know, a good time with. This is a fairly typical arcade style racing game on the Super Nintendo, but yeah, it's cool that they, they licensed it and got to include it. And then here are two sports games I did not recognize. Hoops, Shut Up and Jam, and Hoops, Shut Up and Jam 2. Well, I did a little bit of research and maybe they seem familiar to you as well. That's because they were originally known as Barkley Shut Up and Jam. So Charles Barkley, obviously a very famous NBA player. Uh, in order, I assume, for Pico to acquire the rights to this game, they had to remove that because it's probably really expensive to license Charles Barkley. Makes total sense, but that's what's going on here. Here's a game that turned out to be a bit of a surprise that is called Racing Fever. So this game was originally released in Europe on the Game Boy Advance. Now, sometimes these top-down racing games can be a bit of a pain in the butt. They can be kind of frustrating to play because of its perspective. Now, what surprised me about this game is that your car auto aligns itself with the track after you make the turn. That's something very unique to this game. Most of these games don't do that. So because of that, I found myself having more fun than I expected with this game. Soccer Kid is probably the big release that's included in this collection. And as you can see here, it's a very nice looking platforming game with a fairly unique mechanic in that you play as this kid with a soccer ball and he uses that soccer ball throughout the levels to take out enemies, sometimes break into uh, chests that you might find and unlock stuff. Uh, it's a very interesting kind of unique perspective on these type of games. Uh, it was originally released on the Amiga, but it's cool to see it here. And then we have two Olympic style games here uh, that are pretty, uh, pretty tough to get through. So you have Summer Challenge and Winter Challenge. Now, I didn't play these back in the day, but I was surprised to learn that the Genesis was actually the platform these were released on, which if you look back, that's technically impressive for the Genesis to try to do these kind of 3D games. But man, it doesn't take long to look at this footage to realize that the frame rate is just horrible. These games are almost unplayable in this current format here. It's, it's such a shame. And so I kind of wish if they're going to release these type of games, these early 3D games on a system like this, hey, it's okay to put the original version out there because that's part of history, part of nostalgia. I totally get it. But it also would be cool to include an arranged version of it if possible. You know, if they're able to go in with developers and maybe just make them run better because they're on better hardware, these games would be more fun. 
And then to round out this cartridge, you have Top Racer 2, which may look very familiar because we know this as the Top Gear franchise, but I guess it was called Top Racer in Japan, and that's the one they're able to license. Obviously a very solid arcade racer. But as you can see here, they cover pretty much every genre of sports. So it is cool that there is a cartridge out there with a bunch of these sports titles, because obviously I know that sports games are you know, really popular. All right, guys, well, it's a quick look at the four multi-game cartridge packs that are coming to the Evercade, adding to their already massive library of cartridges. And it's kind of mind blowing to see the success that they've had with this handheld, so much so that they plan on bringing out the standalone versus console. Uh, I think that's coming out this fall or early next year. So that's gonna be the multiplayer focused version of this. And supposedly all of these cartridges will work on it. So looking forward to checking that out as well. But anyways, guys, I'd love to know if you have an Evercade handheld or if you were interested in the upcoming versus console, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. And as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.